Okay, welcome back everybody to Rock and Dr. Rocks. In this episode, I am going to continue with working at the U.S. Geological Survey website. Uh, so this is going to be another episode on how to use <coughs> their stream gauge tools, or not stream gauge, but the stream uh, software tools. And so uh, if you uh, remember from last time, you just go to the USGS uh, survey homepage, which is usgs.gov, and in the search, uh, I've already got it in here, you can put in stream stats. Type in stream stats and go. And <coughs> The third option down here is the StreamStats site. You can see it says streamstats.usgs.gov. And so this is a kind of a standalone application. And if you are interested in using this site, then again, I would suggest you simply just bookmark this uh, streamstats.usgs.gov. And it comes up default to a, a map of the United States. Uh, the menu bar on the left over here is where we'll make selections when we select the stream and what we do to that uh, and what kind of data we get. Over on the right is the layers menu. <clears throat> Base maps comes up with National Geographic. There's different things in here. World Topographic. I'm not sure what that looks like. Uh, or imagery, which is uh, satellite imagery, which I like. So I'm going to set that there. Um, national layers. Uh, so it supports... Remember, we talked about the, um, or maybe we didn't talk about this in the last video, the Huck codes. If we didn't, I'll look that up again, and we, we might talk about that at some point. But but that's checked on. <clears throat> the screen down here has a zoom level, and right now it's a zoom level 4. Uh, map scale is 1 to 37 million, which is huge. That means that if I measured 1 inch on the screen, that that on the ground represents 36,978,596 inches. <clears throat> so this is what you call a small scale view, and it views a large area. So to zero in, again, I'm going to go into South Dakota because that's where I am. Uh, if you left click and hold, you can move the entire map around, or you just roll forward and you zoom in. And notice you zoom in, the zoom level increases. We were way out at two or three or something. Now we're at nine. And as we zoom in, things start to open up and, and become options on the left side over here. And right now we're at states, so South Dakota or Montana. Uh, and application layer showed up over here. And so if we click that down, we see that we're seeing stream gauge stations. So if I turn that off, they go away. I turn it on, they, they stay. <clears throat> So this will be helpful to zero in on uh, a location you want to do. So what I'm going to do today is uh, delineate a watershed. And then uh, in later videos, I will use the data that we collect today and actually do something with it uh, that I think is pretty cool. And again, it's really simple things that you can do as well for the area you live. So we continue to zoom in, and again, now we're at uh, 11, and I'm in South Dakota, so the Montana went away. And you can either, uh, you know, enter in a state, and it'll zoom you to it, or you just zoom in on where you want. So you can see the stream gauge uh, network, and, you know, Rapid City is right here. You can see the Rapid City area, um, and all the blue uh, triangles are USGS stream gauge stations, and uh, the ones that are on this kind of... Uh, curve line coming through Rapid City and then heading out uh, east of Rapid City. This is Rapid Creek. So we zoom in again, they get a little more detail <clears throat> on town. Continue to zoom in. Now we're at level 13. You can start to see streets in town, uh, the downtown area. In fact, this is uh, the same imagery, I think, that's on uh, Google Earth. And so you know, I could zoom in on my on my house. I'm pretty sure it shows here. Here's where we are right out here. I see my street already. And yes, indeedy, there's my house right here. Uh, and this is last year because Chardon Lake Road is under construction. It's done now. They, re, they widened it, put in curb and gutter and sewer drainage and all that kind of stuff. Okay, zoom back out. And I am going to start at this gauge site right here. So if we look at Rapid City here, 
uh, and it's hard to kind of see because this is a, a two-dimensional map, but this ridge that goes north and south right through Rapid City, this is uh, a hogback ridge. Uh, we have been up on top of the hogback dinosaur park. I've done some videos up there looking at the fire smoke. Briggs and I walked on the trail system that's up here in this area. Um, so this is the ridge that goes through town, <clears throat> and it is split by what's called a water gap. So Rapid Creek goes through this, and there is a gauge right down here. Uh, we can click on that square, and this is Rapid Creek at Rapid City, <clears throat> gauge number 0641400. And again, you can link to the NWIS page or you can go to the stream stats page, which gives you a lot of the stream stats information that we're going to be looking up here <clears throat> as we go through this exercise. Okay, so to start over here, uh, it says click to select a state <clears throat> or a regional study area. I'm going to click on South Dakota. And I'm into level 15 now, and note that when I go from, a back out again, when I go from level 14 to level 15, the stream network appears. And here's the streams that are delineated. <clears throat> and at this point, I can begin to delineate a watershed. And I can go in, let's see how far you can go in, 16 there, 17, 18, 19, so 19. And so these blue, these are, these are uh, pixels, these are squares in here. Uh, these have been delineated using various uh, techniques. And uh, this is the representation of the stream coverage for the USGS water network. And so delineating a watershed simply means that I can, uh, using this tool that we're going to go into, I can click on any one of these blue cells anywhere on this map as long as you're in a uh, level seven, 15 or higher, and it will delineate the watershed, which means that it will calculate and outline the physical area that contributes to drainage to this site. And so I'm going to go to delineate, click delineate, and it says to click on a blue stream cell to start the delineation process. I'm going to close the layers down, and I'm going to click on a couple of cells above this little tributary coming in. And it says, my click point is valid. It's delineating my watershed. And here we are. Okay, so this is the contributing watershed area to this poor point. The point I clicked in Rapid City, in the Hogback area, down on Rapid Creek, that USGS uh, stream gauge. And all the area that's shown in this yellow shade is contributing runoff to uh, that watershed. And so it's as simple as that. Before this program existed, you would get a topographic map and you'd use a pencil and start following topography and using the rules of water flow, deciding where this uh, boundary went. So in other words, what this says, let's see how far I can go in here. Let's zoom in just a little bit. Uh, so here we are at 15. <clears throat> and so a water droplet falling right on this road, right on the watershed boundary, is the one that has the decision. Is it going to go to the east and get in this watershed over here, or it's going to go to the west and get in the watershed that we just delineated? Uh, any water falling over here to the east is going to go east. Anything over here is going to go west. And, and so this boundary is just an elevation boundary, which represents the highest uh, elevation for that point I clicked to drain water to that poor point. So let me get it back in the screen. Okay, at this point, we can download the basin, which I'm going to do, and there are three options. Uh, I am going to download a shape file, not because it's the best, but it's because it's able to be used in other uh, programs. And so I'm just going to save it to uh, my downloads is fine. And <clears throat> I'm going to just call it uh, Rapid Creek at Rapid City, rcrc.zip, save. And now we have that saved. Okay, the other thing we can do on this is we hit continue. And it will uh, come back with a... <clears throat> set of data for this watershed, which I will also download 
and like I said in the later video, we will use that and actually do some things. So peak flow statistics uh, and bank full statistics, um, we want those, so I click those. And then basin characteristics are a list of parameters that it will calculate for your basin. So the perimeter of the drainage area, that's like the length along this white line outlining this basin, so we'll have it return that. Uh, basin slope, so we'll have it return that. Uh, the basin shape parameter, return that. I already just did contributing flow and change in elevation up above. Uh, mean basin elevation. Maximum basin elevation, percent lakes, percent developed land. So you can see part of this is in West Rapid City. The rest of this is pretty much undeveloped. <clears throat> so most likely it's going to be a relatively small um, area of developed land. Uh, impervious area, yes. An impervious area is important for watershed runoff because the more development there is, say building buildings and parking lots and roads, that changes the status of the land <clears throat> from something that would typically uh, infiltrate water immediately upon uh, rain and run it off immediately. So what that means is the higher the impervious percentage in a watershed, the more water that is going to be returned to the stream channels faster and give uh, higher peak flows sooner in the streams. Longest length of the flow path, <clears throat> we'll take that. Uh, limestone geology, yes, we have a lot of limestone bedrock in here. We'll see what the percent of that is. Uh, minimum basin elevation, area covered by non-contributed drainage area. I'm just going to click all of these. And instead of me reading all of them, I encourage you to go in, go to this site, and look at these things. And you can do this for a watershed where you live. You know, go to um, this website, zoom in, find the... Um, find a stream gauge near where you live <clears throat> and then go through and delineate a watershed based on that gauge and start to get an idea of how water flows and how water moves in your area. Okay, so right now it's calculating uh, all these statistics that I, that I just checked and it's done. <clears throat> okay, so the basin characteristics, uh, contributing drainage area above this pore point. Remember we clicked on this point down here in the middle of Rapid City <clears throat> and the contributing drainage area upstream all this area in shaded yellow is 413.06 square miles. Okay, the basin perimeter 180 and a half miles around that white line. Elevation 56, 68, max elevation 7176 feet so almost 7200 feet up here somewhere along this ridge. Uh, lakes, 0.49%, so pretty small. Let's find that impervious right here. Um, was that impervious? I think that was. So pretty low, 1.13%. Again, it's just this little area down here <clears throat> that's impervious. But all these statistics, you know, come come with this. And we click this now and we get this uh, report. And you can enter, again, if, you, if you're printing this off, and my students will do this for class, uh, you know, they put a title in here. They can enter comments about what's going on in here. And it shows a map with your uh, clicked point or your poor point and the lat lawn of that point, uh, the date that this was uh, run, all of the basin parameters uh, that we uh, checked, <clears throat> plus statistics that we can use for uh, other uh, evaluations. And so these pieces of information here, uh, we're not gonna go through that on this video, but on future videos, uh, we will do that. So that's the report. And we hit um, download. And um, again, I'm gonna save, I'm gonna save this as a, a CSV, a comma separated value uh, because this will, be able to be used in a, a spreadsheet. And we're going to do the same area in downloads, and we're going to call it again RCRC, <coughs> and click Save, Close. And then we're done. Okay, and that's all there is to it. So uh, 
again, uh, once you're in here, you can you can go back and and um, and click on South Dakota, and it should come up and say, uh, "Do you want to start over?" Yes, and you hit yes, and it kicks you away out, so you can go in and do another one. Okay, so have fun with this. This is uh, a pretty cool tool. It's a pretty powerful tool. Um, it is something that is relatively new, just, uh, just a few years old that, uh, all the things I showed you, you had to calculate by hand prior to this coming out. And now it's here readily available free online at streamstats.usgs.gov. So give this video a thumbs up if you like this. Let me know in the comments if you log on to this site and try this with a, a stream channel near, uh, your location and what your results were. Thanks for watching. See ya.